if you don't like the weather in Tasmania, come back in five minutes. Obviously yesterday when we woke up, the weather couldn't have been any more atrocious than it was. Hobart's copped, us, Hobart's copped the flogging, but it looks like we're just gonna have to go. If we go coast along here, we'll be sweet. We're just gonna wait for this rain to go. Um, however, you know, we woke up and looked out, out the window at 6 a.m. and we're hoping for a sunrise. It was just raining. A couple of hours later, we're out scuba diving and it's sunny and it's warm. Next thing you know, we're off whale head and it's blowing 45 knots. Well, we're uh, about 300 metres uh, to the west of whale head and uh, we thought we'd come out and uh, wet the lures. Oh, do I love it? Do I look like I love it? It's unbelievable. Then last night we you know, managed to uh, sit around in a beautiful bay with nil wind, um, have a barbecue. And uh, we've got some amazing seafood here. The vastness of temperatures and winds and colds and hots, that's kind of the magical part about it. My name's Chris from Shockwave Charters. We've just been out sort of testing out the Shockwave and showing uh, Showing people where we sort of go in southern Tasmania here. It's an amazing, amazing part of the world down here. So we've had Andrew from Shockwave. It's been, look, it's always great. This is Andrew's second time down to Tassie. Uh, first time after we launched the boat and um, basically got it into, into survey. And Andrew's a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the boat and look to see the way Andrew drives it, and especially in the seas that we had in the last couple of days has is, is been invaluable. Three and a half, four metre swell. Uh, wind speed in excess of 30 knots and uh, we're cruising along at seven knots trolling for tuna and uh, according to our local ab diver Joey this is where weather's made this is where the wind comes from where else do you want to be brilliant brilliant boat I mean obviously yesterday we we, we wanted to go out and um, try and get a tuna I mean we, we would have got it if we got further south but we could get as far as sort of whale head southeast Cape had no success unfortunately however Seeing this boat and looking, I mean, again, having Andrew at the helm who drives these um, as rescue boats um, and has got years and years of experience in this hull. Looking at the boat in the water, it doesn't appear that it was as rough as it was, but it was, it was hectic. I mean, we had willy willies of water. It was, it was crazy, but this thing really, really, really just turns it on in that kind of sea. And I suppose being in Tassie, to be, to be able to know that this boat can do it comfortably, safely, and, uh, you know, and of course, keep, you, keep yourself and your passengers dry and warm, it's just amazing. So the Shockwave, it's, um, it's a 9.1 metre boat, 10.1 overall. Draws about 500, powered by twin Yamaha 300s. I'm, I'm stoked with these Yamahas. I'm glad we made the decision to get them. What I'm are you like, doing flat out? 48 knots. 48, 48 and, you, knots. and that'll be like four litres a nautical mile. Yeah, two, 200 litres an hour. Man, you're covering a bit of ground. I can go halfway across ta well, a third up Tasmania in an hour, yeah. you know, which is pretty amazing. The evolution from the, the previous model Yamaha V6 to this one, even though it's the same power plant, yep. um, but adding the digital steering to it. It's a really neat transom install. You haven't got all the extra hoses going through to get stuff caught on. I think Hellmaster, the new Hellmaster EX stuff is, as you say, the cat's pajamas. Well, I, I thought it was actually gonna be uh, kind of a bit gimmicky, but it's actually amazing. Like, you know, when you, when you, come, when you come into a, a situation where you need to actually either go sideways or you wanna come into a dock, and you, it's literally like that. And you, when you first start to use it, it takes a while to get used to, but now it makes you look like total pro, you know what I mean, when you, when, you know? It's, um, you know, obviously been fitted with everything from the RL welding pot, um, hauler, we've got all Shimano gear on board the boat. Excellent, excellent gear. We've fitted our lot out obviously with Raymarine, uh, Fleur, gadgets everywhere on this thing. But uh, look, it's all about situational and awareness. And you know, when it's dark or when it's miserable or you know, or just, just in general, it's nice to have good equipment on board your boat. Look, everything's all integrated in. We've done a nice dark charcoal dash. It is a standard color, which just reduces glare, which makes the, um, the boating experience a whole lot more comfortable. You know, we've offset the helm position back a little bit so you're not jammed up against the windscreen. Um, we haven't put any overhead consoles in because trying to access radios and stuff when they're above your head, um, you can't see it, you can't, you've got nothing to hang on to while you're reaching up for it. Um, the window, the side windows open back far enough that you can stick your head out and still access the controls while you're driving. Um, all those little bits and pieces, they're the practical side of stuff that comes from experience of operating the boat. And if you don't have it, you don't, 
you don't know what you're missing out on, but it just makes the whole boating experience so much more user friendly. Um, two touchscreen 12 inch Raymarines in the dash, um, full Raymarine package on the boat with FLIR, um, augmented reality camera. So currently at the moment we're tracking out of Southport Bay at the moment, we can see where our pots are, um, both on the chart and on the AR200. And on here, if we click that, we can obviously get uh, um, a close up with our heading um, and our distance from the waypoint. Look, Chris has really gone all out here and it shows and it does make the boat really easy to operate. Um, C-Zone, um, C-Bus electronic controls. The integration with the C-Zone, so the C-Zone integrates all through the rain marine, so I can basically look up the whole boat electronics, program it all, or, or basically operate the whole electronic system through um, the rain marine screens. The good thing about C-Zone is I can flick that, I know that nav lights come on, radar comes on, what are all, all the functions that I've, all electronics that I want to come on on the boat, come on with one click. So on here we've, we've, we've got Doppler radar, is that if anything's inbound, so if anything, anything in, in a collision course, I suppose if you like, will we'll light up red. So if any, if any targets are approaching, which are in your course, they'll light up red. Once they pass you, they go to green. And FLIR is a game changer, like tonight we'll never get back with the FLIR. Essentially we're doing full night nav, it's a pretty dark night. I mean we can see a masthead light on that, which is, which is good, but if there wasn't, you can see we've got a cray boat. Dead ahead here. The only reason I need that actually need the lights on the front is just so Ange can actually see the boys. I, I can see them quite clearly here. Uh, you just got different different colour settings. So you got white hot. Again, they're all just they're all just different colour palettes that you find work for different scenarios. You know what I mean? Like so you can see the heat the heat signature there, but it works. I mean, if that if there was a boy there, that boy would be bright orange. When, when obviously with with the shockwave cat was a I got sent the Captain Magazine video from Jaden. Thanks, Jaden. It's cost me a fortune, but uh, very happy about it. Um, you know, obviously when we, when we were designing this boat, we were we were looking for something that, you know, in tazy conditions, it's pretty crap. Something can handle it. Handle obviously the weather, comfort, dry cab, all that sort of stuff. Um, it's proven itself, mate. Absolutely. I mean, obviously the I think the three meter width and the nine meter length really really helps in in that sort of swell like you know what i mean yeah. like, like even yesterday it was pretty crap out there so to be able to have that extra extra width and obviously the, the motor's fairly wide apart with maneuverability especially with the yamaha hellmaster that's good isn't it yeah i love just the amount of deck space it's just so suited for what you're doing probably one of the best things um andrew that you guys did with this boat access to cri you know, like critical parts you can actually get right in the back right through down here you can access a salt water pump and build from here and look, just so much storage. I mean, one of the things that I found out when, what well, I was fascinated about when I came and saw you guys building the boat was vacuum infused fiberglass. Yeah. I'd, nev I'd never seen about it or heard about it. I didn't know a lot about it. Um, and then when I watched the process, it was, it was pretty amazing. I mean, watching you guys put it all together and then seeing comparative boats, I suppose, if you like, with the same length, double the weight. Yeah. I um, mean, you can probably talk oh, about the weight why. savings, strength, the finish as well. You get good finish inside and outside. Um, you know, the foam core or the Soric core that we put in, there's, it's all closed cells, so there's no, there's, water's not going to communicate through a, you know, like a Boston Whaler with a foam, you know, 75 mil foam core. Yep. You know, it's a really tough, lightweight, strong product. Um, and it's all flow coated inside, so it's easy to wipe out. Yep. Keep clean. For a comparable size boat, there'd be another 30% in resin weight. Yep. So the dry hull, just the fiberglass components of this would have been around about 2.2 tonnes. Right. Um, so if you added another 30% to that, yeah, right, that so that's would... 750 kilos, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of resin. At the end of the day, all of that resin, you'd be driving your boat around everywhere, dragging 800 kilos of resin with you I'd everywhere really, you I'd go. I'd rather get 800 kilos worth of fish. Let's, you know, yeah. what I mean? like that's a lot better idea. Put 800 know? litres of fuel in it. <laughs> I know. You know? Well, there you go. Exactly. The fact that the boat and the trailer is four and a half ton, like empty, which is fine because we can pull it out. We can pull it out. We can tow it places. I mean, it's a big thing to tow. But if we wanted to take it up north or we wanted to tow it somewhere, we can do it with a truck. Um, and it, you couldn't do that if it was a, if it was a seven ton boat. It just, oh. it just, I'd, I'd have to double the size of the truck, and you're seeing the size of the truck, can you imagine the next one? It'd be ridiculous. I don't know about you, but I reckon this is the best place in the world to fish. Yeah. Being, being, able, being able to pull this pin, you know, and flick this thing down. 
but to be able to do that and be able to access this from a, from a tinny mm. without having to like jump over the side or needing a dive door. I mean, I've seen a lot of, I mean, I think you guys did a boat with a couple of dive doors in it. This is, this is as good as a dive door. We've had dives in and out of the water here, no problems at all. And again- And getting fish up over the back's good. Well, it's easy. It's, it's easy to pull the jumbos in straight through the back, you know, yeah. I mean, if you can fit them through that. So no, I really like that access that access panel there. I think it's, um, for summer, if I've got guests and that sort of stuff who want to go for a swim off the back, when we're, you know, in a nice beach setting or whatever it may be, guests can hop off, guests can hop on, really nice and easy. Yeah, well, being in survey, we've had to, um, to provide a minimum height for the rails, um, freeboard. So we've had, for Chris, we, normally the stern rail would, would finish here. Um, and on this, we've run it all the way up to midships there. But also it means you've got somewhere to tie your um, fenders off when you come alongside, um, which is good when you're fishing. You can tuck yourself in. You've got something to hang on to if it gets a bit bouncy. Because we, we can have guests up here, so that's why we made the rails higher. You've got so much space up here, everywhere <laughs> in the boat. I know. It's brilliant. Up here with all the rest of this stuff here, uh, Raymarine AR2000 uh, camera, Quantum 2, Raymarine radar, Fleur, the best thing I've ever had. Again, I think I said the other day, there's, there's a lot of beautiful places in the world, but there's not many beautiful places with not many people. Um, and that's Tasmania. And I think that having a fast boat that can be comfortable to get people to remote locations. You know, we were out there yesterday, we were tuna fishing, we can have a stripey, we got in the water, we got some craze, we got some abs. We, you know, the diversity of the marine life is, is astonishing. Growing up down here, you get to see these amazing um, parts of the country. And I mean, I was involved in tourism in the past for a few years. I really, really enjoyed it. I suppose, you know, I missed that tourism, that tourism venture, which I really enjoyed doing. Um, and I was just looking for something to um, be able to get me out to these remote spots and show other people it. Part of enjoying Tasmania is enjoying the whole collection as a package is that when you hire the boat of us, it's yours for the day, and we can give you the best food, we can take the best fishing spots, we can do literally nothing if you want to do nothing, um, with amazing backdrops and amazing food. So to be able to go and see that today, Tasmania is rawest, and be able to come here and, and eat, like, uh, eat like kings, and with the best produce, the best food, it's just, it's just, it's just such a, um, we're so lucky to be able to do that.